saints, peace, grace, and love of Christ Jesus be with all of you. In our last study on Acts chapter 21, Paul travels back to Syria and Judea. His intention is to return to, to uh, Jerusalem. He's warned by many disciples along with a prophet named Agabus that very bad things are going to take place for Paul in Jerusalem. Specifically, Agabus proclaims a, a prophecy that Paul would be arrested by the Gentiles. However, Paul's conviction is to accept these warnings and this prophecy to enter the city of Jerusalem regardless of what happens. Paul is willing to die for Christ Jesus and the year is right around 57 AD. We're talking about 23 years after Paul's experience on the road to Damascus. Paul's been traveling all throughout the regions, visiting all the synagogues, declaring to the Jews what Christ Jesus revealed to him back in 34 AD, the mystery hid within God, the gospel of grace, the building of a body of believers. Now Paul has written six of the 13 books at this point. He still needs to write the four prison epistles, Philippians, Colossians, Ephesians, and Philemon. Also, he's going to complete his 13 books by writing 1 Timothy, Titus, and 2 Timothy later on. Now, one thing I've been stressing all throughout the study in the book of Acts is the fact that the book of Acts documents the transition from Israel's kingdom gospel over to Paul's grace gospel. We need to keep that in mind. And also that the kingdom gospel and Paul's gospel are taking place simultaneously in the book of Acts, specifically from Paul's conversion in Acts 9 to the end of Acts in chapter 28. Now, during this time, the kingdom gospel is diminishing. And why is the kingdom gospel diminishing? Well, because Israel, Israel's program came to an abrupt end when they rejected the father they killed the son then they rejected the holy spirit when they killed the prophet stephen so god gave israel three chances three chances to usher in their promised earthly kingdom and the result was an abrupt postponement of the kingdom program and the revealing of the body of christ to the apostle paul now keep in mind god did not abandon israel israel abandon God okay but God promised Israel many things there's covenants involved that need to be fulfilled and one being that they would be rulers over the earth and he's gonna give him one more chance and we know this chance is gonna come at Daniel's 70th week and I also discussed in the last study two very important words apostasia and harpazo the word apostasia meaning falling away and the word apostle meaning the taking away what we know as the rapture. So the apostasia is the falling away or the forsaking of the faith that we see in Acts 21, 21. Then again in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. This is a spiritual falling away, a falling away from the faith, an apostasy against the faith. This happens to those who, who God allows to come under the delusion, the deceivement during the first half of Daniel's 70th week. The harpazo, however, is mentioned over 17 times in 13 different verses from Matthew through Revelation. And every time harpazo is used, it's to indicate a forceful removal, being taken out of something, being snatched away or caught up quickly. This we know is going to happen prior to Daniel's 70th week for the body of Christ. Now, two different words that mean two very different things, all right? Now, at the end of chapter 21, something happens. Paul is arrested by the Romans. He's brought before the Roman authority. And let's start at verse 39 of Acts 21 to pick up in the context into our study on today's chapter 22. In Acts 21, verse 39, But Paul said, I am a man which am a Jew of Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, a citizen of no mean city, and I beseech thee, suffer me to speak unto the people. And when he had given him license, permission to speak, Paul stood in the stairs and beckoned with his hand unto the people. And when there was made a great silence, 
he spake unto them in the Hebrew tongue, saying, Now we lead into our study in Acts chapter 22. Now, a quick note before we begin. There were no chapters and verses when Luke wrote the book of Acts back then. Okay, Chapters and verses came along with the assembling of the Bible as we know it today. Now, in Acts 22, verse 1, Paul is speaking, Men, brethren, and fathers, hear ye my defense, which I make now unto you. And when they heard that he, spoke, that he spake in the Hebrew tongue, which was Aramaic, to them, they kept the more silence, and he saith, I am verily a man which am a Jew, born in Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers, and was zealous toward God, as ye all are this day. Now Gamaliel was a doctor of Jewish law, a Pharisee. We see Gamaliel back in Acts chapter 5. He's the one that prevented the deaths of Peter and the apostles, right? The high priest commanded them not to mention the name of Jesus. Then we see Gamaliel stick up for them in chapter 5 in verse 34. Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee, named Gamaliel, a doctor of law, had in reputation among all the people, and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space, and said unto them, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching these men. So Paul was a top student under Gamaliel, the professor of Jewish laws. Now needless to say, Paul, or Saul as he was known at that time, was extremely zealous of the Mosaic system. In verse 4, And I persecuted this way unto the death, binding and delivering into prisons both men and women, as also the high priest doth bear me witness, and all the estate of the elders, from which also I received letters unto the brethren, and went to Damascus to bring them which were there bound unto Israel, uh, Jerusalem, for to be punished. And it came to pass that as I made my journey and was come nigh unto Damascus about noon, suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me. Now here we get a glimpse of the type of brightness involved when our Lord Jesus appears. Paul says it's noon, it's midday. The sun's brightness at noon is nothing compared to the brightness that encompassed Paul here in verse 6. Jesus was putting off light, so bright that it actually blinds Paul. It completely destroys his eyes. If you remember, when we look back at the meaning of the word apostasia back in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, we also saw another example of the brightness of our Lord Jesus Christ. In 2 Thess 2.8, And then, shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Also, we're told Jesus will appear as lightning at the second coming, meaning Jesus will appear with quickness, the, with brightness and with great authority. In Matthew 24, verse 27, For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now, um, I'm not sure if you've ever had lightning strike right next to you before, but I have. And I can attest to the fact of its brightness. It's absolutely amazing. It's loud, and it will put fear into you. No doubt about it. Now, continuing in Acts 22, verse 7, And I fell unto the ground, and heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And I answered, Who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. And they that were with me saw indeed the light, and were afraid. But they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. And I said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto me, Arise, and go into Damascus, and there it shall be told thee of all things which are appointed for thee to do. And when I could not see for the glory of that light, being led by the hand of them that were with me, I came into Damascus. 
And one, Ananias, a devout man according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there, came unto me and stood and said unto me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. And the same hour I looked up upon him, and he said, The God of our fathers has chosen thee. You hear that? God chose Saul. God chose Paul. Okay? That thou shouldest know his will and see that just one who is Jesus and should shouldest hear the voice of his mouth for thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard and now why tarriest thou arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins calling on the name of the Lord okay now let's stop here for a minute and talk about verse 16 there's a very sincere and legitimate question that arises for many new right dividers after reading verse 16. And the question is, why was Paul water baptized? What's, the, what's this washing away of sins? And what's this calling on the name of the Lord? Well, these are all very good questions. And they all have very good scriptural answers. But we need to rightly divide to answer those questions. Now, without doing a full-blown study on the right division of water baptism, we can still answer these questions in a general fashion, still keeping the study around 30 minutes. Now, first thing to consider here is who is speaking? It's Ananias. Is Ananias in the body of Christ or is Ananias a kingdom saint? Well, Ananias is a kingdom saint in the kingdom program. He started out believing in Jesus as the Messiah long ago. He's part of the prophetic program. And it's written that he was a devout Jew according to the law. Okay? Important to note that. Now, looking at Ananias here, we're seeing a very good example of the program which will be during Daniel's 70th week. Belief plus the law. Getting water baptized. Now, why will they be water baptized? Because Israel's promise is that they will be a kingdom of kings and priests. And in order to be a king and priest, their law demands water baptism. It's very simple. Also, they'll need to endure in good works till the end. And finally, we read that they'll need to call on the name of the Lord at the second coming. We're seeing exactly what Paul talked about back in Romans 10, Israel's program calling on the name of the Lord if you remember our study is also in Acts 2 verse 21 and Joel 2 verse 32 Israel's program and Ananias is in that program the kingdom program so Paul was water baptized by Ananias for Ananias's benefit not for Paul's benefit look at Acts 9 verse 17 and Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him on Paul said brother Saul the Lord even Jesus that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest hath sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost and immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales and he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized now Paul was saved apart from the water baptism. Ananias is practicing the kingdom program where all believers of Jesus Christ are water baptized, preparing them to be kings and priests ruling over the earth. Had Paul not been water baptized, then how would Paul have convinced any of the Jews to listen to his testimony? It would have been a stumbling block to the Jews. They wouldn't have respected Paul's apostleship whatsoever. It had to be done, but not for Paul's salvation. It was to save others, okay? There's a difference. Also, Paul being water baptized gave enough credibility with the Jews to replace Peter's ministry, the kingdom gospel. Again, there's a transition taking place here. Also, the Jews couldn't say he wasn't a legitimate apostle because he never got baptized. You see, it added credibility to Paul's apostleship. Now, keep in mind, it was important for Paul to become as a, as 
uh, the or whatever. Remember, we talked about that in the last study. If you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 19, For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without the law, as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am, I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. Paul, thinking that they were in the last days, thinking that Daniel's 70th week was upon them, would do absolutely anything and everything to save his kinsmen, his Jewish brethren. Now, continuing on in Acts 22, verse 17, And it came to pass that when I was come again to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple, I was in a trance, and saw him saying unto me, Seeing Jesus, Make haste, and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, for they will not receive thy testimony concerning me. And I said, Lord, they know that I imprisoned and beat at, in every synagogue them that believed on thee. And when the blood of thy martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by and consented unto his death and kept the raiment of them that slew him. And he departed unto me. And he, I'm sorry. And he said unto me, Depart, for I will send thee far hence unto the Gentiles. So what we just read is Paul's testimony. The same testimony that he's been giving for the past 23 years in all the synagogues, trying to convince the Jews that Jesus is the Messiah, and also telling them the mystery revealed to him concerning death, burial, resurrection, salvation in Christ Jesus. And in verse 21, a very important verse, because verse 21 tells us exactly when Gentiles were being added to the body of Christ. Exactly when the body itself was created and Paul being the first in that body the chief Okay added to that body in verse 22 and they gave him audience unto this word and then lifted up their voices and said away With such a fellow from the earth They wanted to kill him for it is not fit that he should live and as they cried out and cast off their clothes and threw dust into the air So why are they so angry here? They're angry because Paul just told them that their God, their Jewish God, has left them, postponed the kingdom promises, and went to the Gentiles. It's the mention of the Gentiles here receiving the glory, the gifts, the grace, the love from their God that makes them jealous, and it gets them very angry. In verse 24, the chief captain commanded him, Paul, to be brought into the castle. This is to protect Paul, okay? And bade that he should be examined by scourging, that he might know wherefore they cried so against him. And as they bound him with thongs, Paul said unto the centurion that stood by, Is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman and uncondemned? When the centurion heard that, he went and told the chief captain, saying, Take heed what thou doest, for this man is a Roman. Then the chief captain came and said, Tell me, art thou a Roman? He said, Yea. And the chief captain answered, With a great sum I obtained this freedom. And Paul said, But I was freeborn. You see, the Roman captain paid money to become a Roman citizen. But Paul was born in Tarsus. Gentile Roman territory which made him a Roman citizen by birthright in verse 29 then straightway they departed from him which should have examined him and the chief captain also was afraid after he knew that he was a Roman and because he had bound him on the morrow because he would have known the certainty wherefore he was accused of the Jews he loosed him from his bands and commanded the chief priests and all their council to appear and brought Paul down and set him before them. And that brings us to our next study in Acts chapter 23. Now, a couple things to close with here. First, we saw Paul's testimony that he's been using since day one to convince the Jews that Jesus is in fact the Messiah and also convincing them of the death, burial, and resurrection. 
all while simultaneously preaching to the Gentiles. So the body of Christ, we see, started back with Paul in chapter 9, and it has been growing ever since. Chapter 22 gives us part of Paul's testimony over the past 23 years. So that concludes this study. Grace, peace, love of Christ Jesus be with all of you. And Lord willing, I'll be back for a study on Acts chapter 23.